Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is episode 18 of our Make an RPG series using Unity and C Sharp, and today I'm going to cover using a character controller, or a player character controller, uh, which is a game object or a component for a game object in, within Unity. Um, where we left off last time, where we I created this script, or we were working on a script, a player movement script, where basically we looked for individual inputs, uh, and then we used it to control a character or a transform and this is using basic transform translate functions it's not the it's not the most ideal situation you want for a character con movement but it's definitely a great uh, starting place the character controller which we're going to move to today is much better at handling the things that we want uh, or things that I'm going to use it's simple or they have a simple move there's two functions you want to look at with a char character controller Simple move and then move. Move is much more complex. It can do a lot more things. And simple move basically can just takes a speed and will move your character in one way or the other. Um, I, I think char character controller is a great way, great starting spot uh, for character movement. Uh, if you really want to get into in depth, uh, I haven't done it. Uh, creating, my, I haven't not created my own personal movement script fully. I always use a character con controller because it does enough for what I want to do. But if you're making like an intense first person shooter or a really in depth, uh, maybe like third person action game, you might want to work, start working on your own. But the, the character controller and what I covered last time is a good starting point. So, anyways, that was long winded. Uh, anyways, I'm going to, we're going to go to our player movement folder and I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'm going to call it uh, player controller. And I'm going to open that up in mod develop. And um, once it opens, we're going to create a few variables, and the first variable we're going to do is a public uh, float, and it's going to be a, uh, we'll call it rotate speed, and then we're going to do a public float uh, forward speed, and uh, then we'll do one more, oh no, that'd be, yeah, we'll do a private, excuse me, private, and this is going to be a character controller, and we'll call it, uh, we'll just call it controller. Oh, we'll call it player controller. And then in our start function, what we want to do is we want to um, get the component. So you'll go player controller is equal to get component. And I believe it is, um, it is arrows. And in the arrows, you do character controller. And then you do two parentheses, parentheses, excuse me, and a semicolon. And this basically is going to attach the component character controller to this player character, which is attached to this transform, which the script is attached to the transform. So in our now, now we have our character controller, we can access it using player controller. So we can do a few things. Uh, one thing we can do is check if it's grounded, which is kind of cool. So you can go if uh, player controller dot grounded it's going to say is grounded and we can do things with this so if the player control is grounded we can say we can jump we can uh, maybe maybe your character you only want certain actions to be done while grounded so say you're casting spells say you can look say the player character needs to be grounded before we do that so in this case the only thing I want to do using player control is grounded is if the player is grounded then we're, we're going to allow the player to jump so then we're going to, um, in this if statement before, I'm going to actually add uh, a get key. Oh, sorry, it's input dot get key. And I'm going to look for, oh, uh, we went down. I'm going to look for space. And now you, you don't have to use this way. You can, um, you can go into the input manager, which we will be in a second to set up a space or a jump key if you want. But I'm just going to do this now. So I'm looking for the get key down. So get key down is true and it's a space key. And the player controller is grounded is true. Then we're actually going to allow our player to jump up in the air. And the, the way you do this is you do player controller dot move. And we, we could use simple move here, but simple move takes a speed and the speed is going to be, well, you'll have to make a speed up. But instead, the easiest way for this one uh, to do is mo uh, move and use a vector three, and so we're just going to say vector three up. So this is going to force the player uh, controller to move in an upward motion. So in the y axis, 
if you did down, it'd force it to go down and left and right. You can force it in different directions. So what we did here is I said if we're going to be looking for a uh, key down, and in this case it's our space bar key, if that is true and we are grounded, then we're going to allow our player controller to go up in the air and it's going to fall back down. The next thing we want to do is uh, do our rotation function. So we're going to do transform dot rotate, much like we did last time. Oh, not rotate around. If you remember, we in our player movement script we did a rotation here with our a. It's going to be the same thing, basically. So it's going to be rotate, and that's going to take a vector three. And so what you what you can do is same same thing I did here is up and down, and I guess. I'll just show you a different way. You can also actually, instead of just saying vector three dot up or down, you can actually go in and create the vector three. A vector three is just a three coordinate system. So you do zero for the x, and then now the y is we're going to do our get axes. Oh, it's input. Excuse me, input dot get axes, and we're going to be looking for what we're going to call the horizontal. I can spell. Now the this get axis horizontal. This is calling the uh, horizontal input key in our input manager, which I'll show you again. I'll remind you guys how to do, and I'll show you that I have it in there already. And then we're going to actually multiply this by our uh, rotation speed, and then zero for our, our z axis. So if you didn't know. A vector three is, uh, let's say, vector three is equal to a three-coordinate system, which is equal to a uh, x, y, and z. Just, just for your knowledge. So to explain this get axis thing, I'm going to go back to Unity. I control S out of Model Development, went back into Unity, and I'm going to go to Edit, and I'm going to go to our Project Settings, and then Input. And if you remember. I covered this in a couple videos ago about the input manager and basically I have a Unity has one they set it up in the uh, default uh, package but I have a horizontal value for input and it's I labeled it horizontal we have a negative and positive key and I'm actually going to change these because we want A to be our positive which means it's going to turn, turn A to be our negative so it's going to turn to the left and then D to be our positive turns to the right and then you want to make sure that your type is set down to key or mouse button. Not snap, excuse me. So then, while we're here, I'm going to set the vertical one as well. The vertical one, uh, same thing, it's going to be vertical. We don't want a mouse button one, actually. But we have vertical. We have our W is our negative, our S is our positive to go back and forth. And then make sure it's key or uh, mouse button also you want x axis for your vertical and then y for your uh, horizontal so then we're gonna go back into mono develop and we're gonna pick up where we left off so right here I have a transform I'm telling the transform to rotate and it's gonna rotate depending on uh, our axis times our rotation speed so if, if you remember I said if you hit if you're looking at the get axis this returns a float value so a number and that number ranges from 0 to 1 or 0 to negative 1 depending on if it's a negative or positive key. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, temporary float variable. It's going to be forward or it's going to actually be a uh, vector 3. Yeah, we want to do a vector 3 forward. And it's going to be a new or it's going to be transform dot uh, transform direction which you can see transform direction takes another vector 3 transform di direction basically is we're going to be looking for transform we're looking for which way the the uh, direction that the here hold on so basically since I said forward we're, we're returning the direction forward that the transform is going. So whatever our object's moving forward, that's what we're returning for our forward direction. So we know when we input it lower, I'll show you. It's kind of confusing. Anyways, float, and then we're going to do uh, current, <clears throat> current, we'll do speed is equal to our actual forward speed times and now we're going to get our uh, input 
dot get axes. And this time it's going to be our vertical axis. So we're going to know which direction, either left or forward or backward. So basically we're calculating a positive or negative number for speed. And we're going to apply it to our forward direction so we know to go for forward. In this case, it's going to be whatever f a way we're facing. So vector 3 dot forward means like we're looking at which way our transform is facing so we can apply a forward speed. And then the next thing we're going to do is go player controller dot uh, simple move. And that takes a, uh, it's going to be speed times forward I believe so I'm going to clear everything I'm going what you need to do is get rid of or just hit this check mark of our player movement script and we're going to drag and drop our player controller script onto the capsule I'm going to press play and first thing we should be able to do Let's turn. Oh, I haven't set the speeds yet. So hit play again to pause it. We're going to go in our capsule. We're going to set a rotation speed of 5 and a forward speed of 5. And hopefully, when I press play, let me zoom in on the capsule. Hopefully, we can see it turn. You can see it turning. So I'm, I'm hitting A and D right now to turn left and right. So A to turn left, B to turn right. Now we're going to go forward and back. And now, in, so I'm going moving forward and we have a jump in. So I'm going to zoom back out, play with the mouse a little bit, give you guys a better view, get our capsule, go to our game mode, and now we got a jumping, moving character. All right, so in this video we covered the uh, basic player player movement with a character controller. We have a new character capsule that's jumping and moving left and right. You guys can play around the speeds if you want, change them up. Um, Please, please go explore the Unity Simple Move and or player Unity player character controller reference on their website and look at the Simple Move and Move functions. They're really powerful. They can do a lot. Uh, this is just a very simple way to check to see, uh, or just another simple way to get a character moving up. And it's going to be more than enough for our game or for the game I'm going to be building with you guys. Uh, so anyways, I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe. Leave comments. I'm more than willing to answer. And I hope you guys look forward to the next, uh, next time I talk to you. All right. Bye.